I'm Odin, and welcome to DIY Prop Shop, where we recreate props using everyday materials without breaking the bank. I only work in black, and sometimes very, very dark gray. So today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is hands down the easiest way to build a professional looking website. Anybody can do it, if you're into that kind of thing. Target and Game of Thrones both use Squarespace. Now, how Stark of Winterfell didn't use Squarespace? Look what happened to them. To avoid their fate, you can get yourself a free trial with no credit card required. Just click on the annotation for squarespace.com slash awme. And if you use the code awme, they'll give you 10% off a new subscription. Squarespace, build it beautiful. Today I'm gonna to be making Batman's utility belt. Batman's utility belt is important because Batman's only true superpower is an unlimited bank account. The belt I'm gonna be making is from Tim Burton's Batman. I like that belt because it has more of a comic book feel to it. What I wanna do is start with a web belt. This is the same type of web belt you use for a tool belt, it was only six bucks. And the first step I need to do is figure out where the belt buckle is gonna go. I want this part to go in the back that's a little too bulky to hide behind the belt buckle. I'm not making this belt for me, so I need to figure out where the belt buckle is gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a piece of tape so I can remember where it is. And now each half I need to cover with a piece of yellow fun foam. And I'm gonna need a second one. Same marks, same place. So I have my main strip. What I wanna do now is cut this little center piece and then a whole bunch of little strips for the top and bottom edges. Once it's all glued together, I'll have these ridges. So to glue it all together, I'm gonna to use contact cement. The way this works is you actually paint the glue on both halves, give it a moment to dry and get a little tacky, and then stick them together. It's exactly the same as the spray adhesive, but this is in a liquid form. So I'm gonna peel that off and use a silver pen. So I'm gonna put it here. That's where I wanna stop my glue. So I've noticed that this piece of foam no longer looks wet. What you want is to be a little bit tacky. You don't want to wait too long. You wait too long and it's not going to stick very well. So I think I'm going to be able to take the two and stick them together. Now I'm going to go ahead and start gluing all my little pieces onto it. All I'm trying to do is make as straight a line as I can, mark off where I want to put glue. Be fine. I've got my edges glued on and I want to trim them and make them pretty. I can do this by using a knife and a ruler or I can try doing it with a pair of scissors and I think I'm going to do the scissors because this isn't completely straight. I'm going to start by squaring up one end over here. Just do it like that. I still have more here than I need. So I thought the scissors would work, and they are pretty easy, but every time I stop and start again, I get a little bite mark. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the razor knife after all. Just going slow. I'm actually trying to pull my entire arm. I'm not cutting with my wrist. I have found that for me, I've been able to cut straighter by doing that. So here's the beginning of my bat belt. Next, I need to make a buckle and a couple of utility capsules. So I need to make a pattern for my belt buckle. Now I know the belt's two and a half inches wide. I'm gonna make a belt buckle three and a half inches wide. In order to make that easily, I'm gonna make myself a pattern on a piece of binder paper. I'm gonna take and put the five inch mark on the edge of the binder paper. This will be my point of reference so all my points end up being square. I'll make a mark at zero and make a mark at three and a half. That's the widest point of my belt buckle. The midway point between the two is gonna be one and three quarters of an inch. I know the belt's two and a half wide and there's a little decorative edge on the belt, buckle itself, and I'm gonna make that two inches. So from one and three quarters, I need to go up to just three quarters and come down to two and three quarters. I'm gonna move down the paper a little bit, ruler's still at five inches, and I make a second set at three quarters and two and three quarters. Now I can connect those dots and draw a line going along most of the paper. I'll just do the whole thing so I know I'm not missing anything and do it there. With the curve of the belt buckle on the top and the bottom, the easiest way for me to get that is to trace something and I thought I would use my bottle of glass cleaner. So I can set my bottle down and just visually center it up as much as I can on the dot, which is my center point, to make sure it's about equal on either side, and then just trace it. There we go. 
That gives me a good approximation of the shape of the belt buckle. What I need to do next is make the little flourishes that go in the corner. Now to do that easily, I'm gonna fold the paper. I already know from the dots that that's the center point here because I did them all at the same time with the one ruler. So I'm gonna to fold to the dots along the outside. Then I'm gonna fold it in half. There we are. I got my fold. Now I'm gonna take a dime and I'm gonna lay that down and trace it to get the corners. But it's giving me this rounded shape. Now the belt buckle has a little bit of an extra flourish on the inside. I'm gonna move down about half an inch and I'm gonna draw a half circle here about half the size of the circle my dime is. I'm just gonna guess because this is gonna be close enough. And then just go straight down that way. Now I can cut it out just like a paper snowflake. All I'm trying to do right now is make a paper pattern. I'll use this to trace this shape onto the foam. And that'll fit on just like that. And that's how I drafted my own paper pattern for the belt buckle. I need to trace two of these. One's gonna be my base layer and the other one will be the border that sits on top of it. Now I only need to put the border on one of these pieces. This one, I need to cut the middle out. What I want to do is glue them together and then cut them out so both pieces are the same size. And so by cutting out the corners like this, I can now lay them on top of each other once they're glued and line them up and then flip it over, and I know where to cut out. I did a pretty good job. I'm a little bit off on the one side. I'll just trim it to fit, cut out along the line, and both pieces will be the same. Try and lay this in as carefully as I can, so I want this to be straight. In the center of the belt buckle, there's a pair of opals stacked on top of each other. The first layer, I use a quarter to make a paper pattern to cut that out, and then I need to make a second one slightly smaller, so I'm gonna trim it down to make the desired effect. I'm gonna coat the middle of the belt buckle with glue. Then I can affix each of the little pieces on top of it. And then when I'm done, I'll come back and seal it with clear spray paint. That'll keep the leftover exposed glue from collecting fingerprints and dirt. I have a bunch of small pieces that go on the side. What I'm gonna do is cut out a whole bunch of little strips, glue them on, and then trim them to fit. This piece I made because it overhangs. And so I'm gonna cut this in half and glue it on from the back side to fill out the belt buckle on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna seal this with clear coat. That way it's safe for me to handle without getting anything stuck to my belt buckle. Now what I gotta do is make the capsules that go on the side. In order to make those, I picked up another larger piece of yellow foam from the dollar store. What's nice about this is it's basically the same type of foam I've already been using for the belt, but it's considerably thicker. This is what I wanna use to cut my capsules out of. So what I plan on doing now is cutting out a piece three and a half inches wide and then cutting that into one inch strips. And just like the paper, I'm gonna set the four inch mark down against the edge of the foam, and then I can make a mark at zero, and I can make a mark at three and a half, and I know that all my lines will be parallel. It'd be easier for me if I turn my mat so that I can see it better. Now additionally, I know my grid is laid out in half inch segments. So I just scoot the ruler down by two grid marks, I'll get a one inch cut. I've got these. They need to be capsule shaped to look right, which means I have to round each of the ends off. To do that the easiest, I'm just gonna take a quarter, lay that on it. Again, I'm holding it on the back side that I don't care about. Now you can leave your belt just like this if you like. It's got a kind of a clean look, it's got a uniform color. But what I want to do now is take some acrylic paint and put it into the lower areas. I want to create some shadowing to it. Now I don't want to antique it, I don't want to weather it, I want to make it look dirty. I just want to make the pieces pop. And that's the completed Batman utility belt. Total cost of materials to build this whole thing was only $9. Let us know in the comments what other projects you want to see us do. And if you try any of these cool builds for yourself, send us a picture at DIYPropShopAtBreak.com. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe.
only work in black and sometimes very, very dark gray. And I guess yellow too. For a free Squarespace trial with no credit card required, click the annotation to visit squarespace.com slash awme. Sign up and you'll save 10% on a new subscription using the code awme. Squarespace, build it beautiful.